so it's a pretty brisk afternoon I'm gonna close my visor definitely makes the sound better boomier but it makes it better anyway it's uh, it's pretty it's a little chilly it's in the mid 40s which doesn't sound cold but you know wind chill factor from riding plus the wind is blowing it makes it feels like it's in it in the high 30s still a beautiful day I want to get a little bit of riding like kind of back roads do like some of the twisties and then after that I'll probably bring the freeway back So I've been riding this bike for about close to three weeks now. Uh, the first week I had it, it rained every day. I took it out anyway the minute I just saw a break in the rain and then I got caught in the rain really bad. At least I got out on it, spent an hour riding and two hours cleaning. Anyway, so far my impressions of this bike. I went from an Indian Roadmaster that, you know, I rode practically across the whole country to this. And this fairing is mounted on the frame rather than the Roadmaster that's mounted on the fork. So, you know, Harley Davidson's Street Glide and some other models are mounted on the forks. I like this setup better. It doesn't feel as lunky to me. I'd have to live with the uh, with the street glide for a little bit to, to really know the difference, I think. But basing it off of a fairing that was mounted to the frame, or I'm sorry, to the forks on my Indian, you know, I'd say that uh, I have some sense of it. It just it's not comparing Harley to Harley. But and like, why did I go with a Harley? I went with a Harley for a couple reasons. One, the dealership is much, much closer, which means a lot. It's amazing how much that means, because if your dealer's really far away, I mean, you really have to plan if you've got to do something to the bike. When it's an hour and a half away, it's, it's a nice ride if you're just going to ride and do an oil change and come home. But if you have any other stuff where you got to leave the bike overnight for whatever reason, somebody's got to follow you or you're paying for an expensive Uber or whatever, you know? And if something needs tweaked a little bit, you, you can't just run down there. I mean, it's it's a whole thing. That was a huge deciding factor to me. And also I noticed that coming back from Sturgis on that bike, when I needed to get an oil change, there was nowhere to go. I mean, it was really hard. You know, I could buy stuff and, you know, be a shade tree mechanic. It was hot, it was, you know, in the summer, obviously. Not how I wanted to spend my trip, you know, and the Harley dealers didn't want to deal with it because it's a metric bike. I'm around Lake Hughes right now, which is, the level's up pretty good because of all the rain we had. Now, I need to adjust the suspension a little bit. I'm probably gonna do an aftermarket suspension at some point in time. Everybody says that you're gonna wind up doing that, so. I've kind of come to the conclusion that that's probably what I'll do. Like right now on this road, it's bouncing me around pretty good. Um, even hard to keep my voice steady because of uh, like that, little bumps. Now this is really bumpy because everybody pulling their boats up here and stuff. But uh, but still, it's, you know, the Pan America doesn't feel like this. It just eats these bumps up. Different frame, a lot of different things about that bike, but, but I'm just, saying it. <laughs> I might be able to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to look into that. I haven't. You just pop the saddlebags off and reach down there and I think you can adjust it. I just haven't done it yet. I really don't know what I'm doing with suspension. I'm going to be honest. I need to ask a few questions and not just jump into it and assume that whatever I do is going to be good. Or maybe I should just count the turns and not worry about it. I've <laughs> done that before. I've completely set my suspension on some bikes so bad. <laughs> it's like really bad. But the bike corners really well for a big bagger. I gotta tell you, it really is nice. I don't feel like I'm gonna scrape. I haven't scraped yet. I haven't gotten, you know, 
super lean angle yet on this thing. I try not to lean it over that much. Less lean, less risk, but it is fun to lean. I'll say that. This mud, once it dries up, it's like really, really dusty and uh, kind of treacherous. So you got to be on your game a little bit on these roads. I notice when I'm going about 60 miles an hour in fourth gear, I feel like I can just keep pulling. Like, I feel like I'm not even, like the throttle's not, it, like it's a quarter turn. That's it. I mean, I just feel like I could just keep ripping. Woo, it's nipply. So there's a road that's closed up here, I think. I'll probably ignore it, like the idiot that I am. Just trying to remember that I'm not on an adventure bike. So I'm averaging between 60, 70 miles an hour on this road. And it's super windy today. I feel like if I was on a street glide, I would feel the wind more. And that's been an argument with a lot of people. So far, it's not throwing me around too much. Now, I mean, you know, this cuts the wind, but it also is, is a big sail too. So it's either your fairing's a sail or you are. Yeah, it bounces around. Oh, I'm really feeling that wind now. It's still a fun ride. I can just cruise right around 70, 80 miles an hour in this gear. But the thing is, when you're in fourth and you're on these kind of roads, it's like if you back the throttle down, the bike immediately responds. Yeah, here's this road closure. Oh well. All right, ooh, the road's nasty right here. What is going on? Are they retarded? That's what it is. I think this is my turn off up here. I'm not gonna go to this one. I'm gonna go to the next one. Put on my signal just in the outside chance somebody's around. There's a bunch of you know what? Maybe I will go down here. Flies are up. I can. There we go. I turn the cameras off. All right, cameras are off for a second. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, cameras back on. Get a different angle here. It's not that high, but it should be kind of cool. Visor down. Get over this hump. Almost rubbed, but I didn't. Be a little cautious right at this weird spot down here. Okay. Yeah, I can see where this probably was flooded all the way up here last week. There was definitely water there. Is the camera hanging in there? Yeah, it seems like it. Man, today's just flying by. Those clouds are beautiful, but I don't want to see any more rain. I know other parts of the country are still getting snow and really cold weather so I shouldn't complain but it was weird because I was talking to a buddy of mine in Harrisburg where I'm from and it was warmer there a few days ago than here and that's on the east coast so I could definitely this new seat I have a, put a new seat on this and it's a two up seat it's by a company called Whiplash I've got no connection with them. Look at that beautiful scene. But I just really like their products. I paid for the seat. They did not give it to me. And like so far, I just love it. So much better than the, than the stock Harley Davidson seat. Now, the seat that comes on this, by the way, is a solo seat. But in the deal that I cut, they gave me the, uh, the two-up version for this. And it's not bad. It's better than the solo seat. Solo seat's absolutely horrible. 
like this kind of stuff. But the two up one's not bad, but this whiplash seat is just so much better. I just, uh, I wish I would have had it for my longer ride that I had uh, the other day. Wow, that wind is just cut across. It wasn't a long, long, long ride. It was about 130 miles, maybe. A mixture of roads, some freeway, some roads like this, some tighter. You know, I never felt in danger on this bike. I never felt like, whoa, this is something I can't control. Even some of these, like even going through that gravel and stuff, I don't feel out of control with this bike. Um, I added these things on here, guards. I don't know if you can see it. Basically, it's so you can practice, and if you drop the bike, it's not gonna screw the bike up. And it was designed by a, a police officer who trained motorcycle police, or still does, actually, I believe. Him and his wife just have a small business, and not like that. You know, I'm trying them out, but what I need, the one thing this bike doesn't have is uh, rear uh, protection bars out of the box. I had to buy those and install them, and then I can put the rear drop bar bars on it. All those things that they leave out on the bike make the bike weigh like 13 pounds less, which isn't huge. I mean, I, I can think of other ways to get some weight off of this. Mainly, I can start a diet. <laughs> The exhaust pipes, when I change those, it'll make a difference. You know, the weight does, I'm not racing this bike, you know? All, all that stuff is really a little bit inconsequential to me. I've gotten used to bikes that do perform fairly well, like from riding Ducatis and Triumphs and stuff. Having a bike like this, it responds really well. I mean, let me tell you something. The Harley Davidson Pan America, you want to talk about a bike, it can get up and go. That bike can get up and go. I wouldn't even be feeling these bumps on that bike because it's meant for, you know, all sorts of terrain. It's a kind of like Harley's answer to the BMW GS. They've done a really good job with it. All right, we're going to take the freeway back. All right, here we go. All right, so now we can get a feel for the freeway. Now I've done all this, but just for the sake of the camera, I mean, it, it's great on the freeway, uh, honestly. You could, I could go a very long way on this bike and be comfortable. I might want to put, you know, like a, a seat back, like one of those support seats, but uh, I don't think you can do that with this seat. No, it doesn't have a slot, so. I'd have to put the other one back on. I don't want to do that. And I hit 95 like really, really quick. Feel that wind come across. <laughs> 